everybody. We're here for another car review. This is Michael, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his truck. All right, so it's a 66 GMC. Uh, I've had it 25 years, and it's LS swapped, lowered. Oh, geez. Uh, complete interior upgrade, and uh, basically drive it a whole bunch. Is it your daily? Or luckily, do you have when, another daily? Uh, when it's not raining, it is my daily. There are no wipers on it, so. What's your most asked question that you get about it? When am I putting the turbo on it? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's everybody's favorite yeah. question. Yeah, and that's that's soon. Uh, we're actually going to start on that fabrication stuff probably two weeks from now. Well, what's your end goal with it? Uh, 600 wheel and to be able to do burnouts whenever I want. Well, that's yeah. a... It's a, a good goal to have. So we have uh, a couple, just little stuff people won't really notice, but uh, these are later model bumpers off of a van that we cut down to make fit. Follow, subscribe, <laughs> like. Yep, lots of videos with the shop stuff we do. Uh, my grandfather bought the truck in 67 with 9,000 miles on it, drove it every day for 25 years, and then gave it to me when I turned 14. So this is a almost a family heirloom then. Yeah. Uh, one of the biggest questions I get asked all the time is what are the wheels? That's uh, an 18 inch Nissan Titan, an uh, actual steel spare. So it took almost eight months to come across those wheels uh, to get all four at once. So. I was wondering about that myself because I, I, I really wanted a steel wheel for, for my race wheels for when I autocross. Mm -hmm. And I saw those, I was like, now that's, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Yep. Yeah, the... Uh, a lot of your viewers may not understand the importance of a GMC hood, but mm -hmm. uh, these hoods are very, very, very hard to find. It took me five years to find this one. Oh, no kidding. Uh, and that's why all the pieces missing. I do have to put it back together now. So, well, I, I see. I had no idea. I don't know a whole lot about old trucks and stuff, so I had no idea that they were that difficult. I mean, I can see why because they're they're very intricate hood and stuff. Yeah. But well, I'll be dang. Well, can we can we look under that thing and, and see what you got for? For them, oh, oh. So oh it's boy. A, it's an 05 48, uh, which is came from a, a, I actually bought a wrecked Tahoe from Craigslist that had been flipped. And we pulled it, pulled the wiring harness, cut the wiring harness down, all that kind of stuff ourselves. And, uh, this one is actually done by SNS Performance in uh, Avoca. Okay. Because I wanted a cleaner look and I didn't have time to do this one. So I had it running for a long time with a really crappy, uh, set up and I'll send you a picture of that and you'll laugh and it'll be great. Oh, I'll overlay that right here. Yep. Um, okay. But basically everything is is set up for the turbo from here. We have fully built 4L80, uh, the big triple disc converter, and then we'll do cam and valve springs and turbo and all that kind of 78 millimeter turbo. 78. Precision? Yep. Uh, no, uh, VS Racing. VS Racing. So, yep, 78, 75. The goal again, 600 wheel. Well, I don't, I don't think you'll have much of a problem with getting there. No, it, it should be there, and that, you know, you have to have goals in the beginning of a build. Oh, absolutely. I, that was one of the things that took me the longest, is to actually figure out what my goal really was. And yeah. it's, it's a little bit smoother with the, my other car now. <laughs> I like that you, for your uh, firewall yeah. reinforcement there and everything. So that's actually the plate that I had on it when I first started driving it. So no kidding. When, when I went to the... Uh, when I went to the antique tag, I pulled it and ran my heater lines to it. So. Now that's that's little that's stuff cool. like that. I feel like makes a big difference. And that little stuff like that is what makes it a real like. Th this is your truck, and it's stuff like that that does it. It's that kind of work and effort that you put into it. That's that's what I love. A little so. stuff here, a little stuff there. A um, couple things on the suspension. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the lower the lower control arms back in the early 80s mm -hmm. they didn't have basically lower controls that were built for that so we took these and what's called stepped them and you can see how it's cut and actually raised up an inch and three oh quarters, yeah uh, there so that was a way to keep the angle right so and still did, get it lower yep and we did s10 springs to drop it a little bit more so, so five dang. inch drop in the front almost <coughs> six, almost six in the back I'll be dang. See, I didn't know that. I had no idea about that. I, I gotta ask though, 
It's completely unrelated. I got to know about the bike. Uh, it's complete decoration. So what? What I, kind I, is? It? Is it a Schwinn? Uh, no, uh, and I can't remember. Dave at Mojo told me what it is, but um, a guy found it in a shed that, uh -huh. on a house they had bought, and it was complete like this. And so I gave thirty bucks for it, and then I bought a separate set of handlebars to flip around and a separate seat and grips. So. Uh it, it stays in here all the time. That's that's a lot something that I never mentioned in any of my videos or anything. I'm a bike fanatic. I love oh, yeah. them. I've got a 1948 Schwinn Sweet. that I'm. It's a tank too. And yeah. It's, I love it. I'm I'm having to sell it because I need to pay for other things. But I love bikes, and that's what's something that I always <laughs> notice about your truck is this yep. bike. And I was wondering what the story was. So and the, it's it's a very nice touch. The, the goal is to make it more of like a uh, flat track or board track racer look. So I'm yeah. gonna do a number plate and stuff that'll fit right in here. Oh, I got gotcha. you. I just had to have time. No, I, I understand about the time, that's for sure. All right, well, in the spirit of that, can uh, we take it for a drive? Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. I mean, we're gonna start like yep. a normal. Yep. All right. Yep. Guessing it's down three. Yep. Reverse neutral drive. Yep. It's power steering and stuff like that, so. Oh, it's better than uh, that. It's an electronic throttle, so there's no real weird cable pull or anything like that, so. All right. <laughs> this is a lot of fun for me. <laughs> These things more well behaved than, uh, than my Mazda is, by far. <laughs> Easier to drive and everything. I figure we'll go on down to uh, Horse Barn Road. Yeah. Go down that way. Probably not a lot of traffic this time of day. Yeah. I love the, it. The goal yeah. with the goal with the truck is to be super quiet, comfortable, and eventually get AC. So. Eventually get AC. Yeah. All right. Now you're talking more on my level because I don't have AC. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm genuinely, I'm honestly surprised, and not not in like a bad way, but like like I told you earlier, the only older truck I've driven that's this kind of age is my dad's old Chevy dump truck, and my buddy. Hey man, we're doing a car review. I'll be back here in a few minutes if you're sticking around. So you got this thing running? Yeah, oh yeah, dude. Oh, you know it's all awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, no, John. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Oh great. <laughs> I'll see you, buddy. So like I was saying, like the only older truck I've driven that's anywhere near this vintage is my dad's ton and a, I think it's a ton and a quarter actually. Oh my gosh. And it's it's a flatbed dump truck and it's got a four speed uh, transmission with the two speed axle and it's got a 350 Chevy in it that's a bone stock 350 Chevy, like old wow. school carved. And I've driven that around and I've we hauled gravel and stuff and I've done stuff like that and, and I've pulled the tractors and stuff with it but that's kind of it and it doesn't have power steering and it's <laughs> not an automatic and it's very not well behaved and the uh the clutch is really grabby and it chatters real bad so this is this is a very nice yeah, this interesting is, this is completely different than that <laughs> this is a much nicer thing to drive for sure and, and that's the goal of the truck is to to really be able to get in and drive and be easy you know right. with, with it being so low, there are a couple spots here on horse farm we'll have need to watch, but... The bridge up here? Yeah, yeah. So, well, you know, because you drive lower and stuff, too, so... Yeah. Well, I, I, I come up here for work all the time, on my routes, and I come up here, and this is one of the bad ones. Depending on the car I drive, I can either hit it at 40 or at the slow down at 20. <laughs> yep. So, which, which work car I'm in, the, the Subarus that we drive, I can go over it at 40 miles an hour and it just jumps <laughs> the car. But it doesn't it doesn't hurt anything. Right. But some some of the older cars aren't focuses and stuff. You go through there and it's scrape the front off. Yep. Oh, wow. I'm I'm really I'm impressed with it. I really am. Thanks. And I, I like the feeling of driving it. This is a bad thing for me because now I'm gonna want <laughs> an older truck. But it's 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 comfortable too with the interior you put in, it's super comfortable. I'm a, I'm a fan. I've Thank liked you. it since I first saw it, and now after being in it and driving it, like it's it's easy. 
It is. It's yeah. like driving anything. It's a super easy, drivable truck. So, you know, the, the goal behind doing LS swap on anything is to make it like this. You get in it, you turn the key on, electronic fuel pump, you just start it, it goes, fuel injection. It's easy. So, you know, we want to take, th this is basically what we want to build for customers. Right. It's stuff like this that they could get in and drive every day. It's very, very quiet. That's the big thing. Everybody always puts big cams and loud pipes and things like that, and they're hard to drive every day. I mean, there's no sound in there. It's like a 2010 model truck. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, it's literally like driving anything. It yeah. really is. I mean, of course, you have a, a couple of rattles, but yeah. it's a 50-year-old <laughs> truck. So yeah. what, what do you expect it to be? But it's behavior-wise and stuff, it's, it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. I would prefer to have a speedometer though. <laughs> we we have one right here. Okay, okay, so you're watching me. You're watching me. Okay. <laughs> well, I gotta tell you. Uh, we'll show we'll show those guys too. Okay. See, we're not we're not speeding. We're doing we're yeah. behaving the law. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're it's 35 uh, speed limit. We're doing 33. See, he's a speed demon. I tell you. Come to get me. Come at me. <laughs> Come at me, bro. So uh, we're gonna have somebody 3D print a new gauge cluster that'll uh, hold a tablet. Uh huh. So, and I'll run all my gauges from the tablet. Okay, so it'll be easy. Because, you. you know, you can spend several hundred dollars on tablets. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen the rest of the truck. There's not, the only thing that's had several hundred dollars spent on it is the transmission. I got gotcha. you. So, I've got a couple of friends with some old uh, short lines. Yeah. And the one burns plug wires every time he touches the ignition key. And the other one is constantly burning out transmissions. I think you put a turbo 400 in it now. Wow. Or but, so. I'm, I'm all the time hearing about transmission problems. That's fine. There's our buddy Richard. This one right here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Richard Martinez. Richard Martinez. Yeah. I like his car. Yeah. Yeah, he took it to one of the Bobby Jason Hallett days. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> he let me ride in it. Man, that's I nuts. bet that was quick. Yeah. I've always yeah, wanted like, to get Like low, low 130s, I think, something like that. Really? It was really fast, yeah. It was a lot of fun. That was with my 200 pound ass in there, 220 pound ass in there. So we have the shift point set real low on the trans, so it drives like a regular car. Now once we do the turbo setup, you're going to turn it up? Yep. Because it, it'll need it. It'll, you know. I do have one question. Yeah, there's no blinkers either. Oh, okay. You just kind of make your way. I, I was I was trying to be polite that time because I was yeah. working in traffic, but when I turned out, I didn't use them. So. Yeah. The, the switch and everything is there. Um, somebody cut off the plug, so I've got to I've got to find the new like GM style plug that plugs in each other oh. and wire them in. So. Okay, I got you. Well, I, I okay. I've got this project that I had told like two people to, and it's it's now, one of now my, you're telling everybody. I tell everybody, and it's because of this truck <laughs> that I'm telling this. Okay. I my dad has a it's a GMC, but I think it's like a. 58 yeah GMC and it's a ton and a quarter and uh, after driving this I've always had the, the this notion in my head like I would really like to LS swap this and just yep. just use it for like a tow truck or something yep. right and I could like haul my cars or stuff with it right and I could put like a flatbed on it and, and stuff like that and because my other truck's a flatbed you've never seen my other my actual pickup have you uh -uh. Okay. I've got an 85 Isuzu diesel with a flatbed and stuff <laughs> God. It's waiting on an what? engine, so that's my that's my that's my third one. <laughs> oh so after driving this now, I can officially say to the internet that's something that I want to end up doing in time. Yeah, is get that truck running and use it for my my worker, my pig. Yeah, that's what I want to do. And it's it's this really pretty. It's this old dial. Uh, like it's like a dark blue green color. Yeah. But it's got the patina because it's just set in the field. It's set in the woods actually. Oh, it's awesome. And it's it's good and we got the title for it and everything. It probably still runs, but it's just it's one of those mini projects that yeah. car people get. Well, that rig is probably a six owner, right? I think so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, fifty miles an hour on the highway is about all you're gonna get. Well luckily I know you now and you do these, so yeah. uh, I'll yeah. just let you LS swap for me. Oh, okay, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't we don't need any 600 horsepower turbo, but right. you know a good healthy 350 horsepower or so. Yeah, so I we mean, can pull something. We know you think about like a like a 5.3 out of like a later model, you know, 04 and newer. I mean, they're 320 horsepower. I mean, 
missed three times with that six of you yikes. That's so. all I, mean. I wouldn't be hauling any heavy with it. It'd just be another another toy, another yep. toy. Like I like I need another toy. But. Everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> How many toys do you get before you just become a collector, not a builder? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's my problem. I've got so many as it is. I've got this little Traxxas Nitro car I've been trying to get tuned and sitting on my bench in my garage for two weeks and I haven't got to run it. <laughs> See, I, I, I couldn't do, uh, man, I, have, I'm, I'm, I follow the rule of one project at a time, mm -hmm. right? So I have to get this turbo before we start our, before I start my next project now. My little brother, he thinks differently. <coughs> he has three or four projects at one time, don't you? <laughs> That sounds yeah. like a call out to me. Yeah, but he finishes them all, you know, so that's yeah. always a plus. That is always a plus. Well, I that's what I tried to do. And my truck was mostly done and got to the point where I was looking for something to do to it. Mm -hmm. And I ended up buying my Mazda. And that was actually purchased for an old relationship I had because I need something that could hold people in shape. Ah, kids. I got you. So I got that, and that's when I really got into cars because I loved that car. I loved yeah. it. It was fun. And my truck has 65 horsepower. Yeah. So the car was still only 135, but it's a lot faster. Than it was a lot so different too. I started building it up, and then it wasn't until I decided to auto cross it where I was like, all right, well, now I've got to do all this other yeah. supporting stuff. And the engine locked up in my truck, and then I bought my Toyota. So that's nice. I got, well, I got mad at my truck because I was like, I'm done with this piece of crap. <laughs> it's, it's quit on me again. So I bought another car out of uh, spite. That happens. Well, I like the idea of one product at a time, and I gotta tell you, we have a part two for this. I'm calling it already. <laughs> part two, when it's turbo, and I want to drive it. Oh again. yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll definitely do that because now you've driven it. It's you see how easy it is to drive. Now I want to take this. I want it to stay this quiet when I'm not in boost, right? I, I so you. you're gonna need some uh, vacuum operated exhaust ducts. So it's really yeah, uh, it's called loud valves. There's a company that makes it, uh -huh. so like uh, when you go to boost, it opens the valve. Yeah, yeah. So that, <laughs> when I saw that, that was when it was like, okay, sealed deal. Yeah. So we're definitely going to do that. Um, that's that's been on the plan for a long, long time, and it'll be a dump right behind the front wheel. So it'll be, you know, about a 24-inch pipe that'll be straight. So when you're in boost, you know, and then we we can always put like a boost controller on it if I wanted to maybe open it at five pounds or something like that so now that sounds like a good plan to me yeah so I, this is the old person to me talking yeah. my other car was super loud yeah i put like the loudest as i could find on it yep everybody hated it it was louder than my mazda which is ridiculous <laughs> and i traded across to uh daniel lockmer and i got a magna flow on it that was super quiet yep. it's nice and throaty when i want to but it's super quiet and I love that it's super quiet yep. because it's comfortable to ride in. Yeah. If you I can have, go I, on trips and take yes, it. Yeah. I can cruise with it. If I have a girl in the car, she'll complain about yeah. her ears bleeding. So it's great. Yeah. That said, I want a dump on it because it's too quiet. I want it yeah. to be louder. I want it to be louder. I want an electronic So, you know, the, the thing is like um, the electronic cutouts, you have to spend real money to get a, one that's right, you know, or you're going to be in trouble, man. I, yeah. Like this one right here. I think some of those scrapes are for me. Um, the, uh, I mean, the bottom of the front bumper is four inches from the ground. So you know, it's it. You'll come out of some parking lots and it. Um, but the dump valve is only like 175, 180 bucks. So by the time you spend like 200 dollars on an electronic cutout that works about two thirds of the time, you're better off to do the boost activated valve. I wonder if I. Well, what about for an NA car? Can I get one for an NA car like that? No, because you don't. It has to be boost related. Yep. You know, I get one that's vacuum operated. I can flip a vacuum switch or something. Yeah. See, because it's, so it's not vacuum. Because how? Um, oh, I have no idea. I don't know anything about vacuum. I don't know anything about that stuff. See, because the thing is, like, once you get into RPM and stuff, you lose vacuum. Right? Isn't that how it works? I, I can't I think remember. So, but. I'm, I'm really bad at that stuff. I'm going to think on that because that would be a good idea because then you could adjust it. Yeah, I could just, you know, if I get like a vacuum solenoid or something. Yeah. I could, yeah. For another time. Yeah. Well. Oh, man. Oh, my God. That is an actual E-type, isn't it? Yes. 
Oh my god. That uh, is uh <laughs> The coolest thing about the old truck is the thumbs up you get from people. Oh that, that thank you, I'm glad you said that <laughs> because I got so entrenched in our conversation I about forgot some other questions I like to ask. So what the reactions that you get, I'm sure you get plenty of them in this, especially considering a lot of people like the patina look and yep. the classic stuff is coming back in. What's some of the, what's some of the craziest looks and stories that you've had? What kind of reactions have you gotten that have really left an impact for you? For me, really, like, you know, people can approach this truck mm -hmm. with no questions asked. And I feel like I'm an approachable person, but, I would agree. you know, at the gas station, they're not scared to walk up and say, oh, man, nice truck or what all's done to the truck or whatever. Yeah. You know, you get some trucks that are super nice and super clean and people are scared to get up close to them and touch them. So that's that's probably the biggest thing. Because then I get to tell the story of my grandfather and all that stuff. So we'll have to get this picture. Uh, he passed away in 2016. So it's kind of a, me to put kind of a big truck. You know, I mean, it's a it's a big part of my life. Yeah. Because well, obviously the truck, truck. Had, yeah. yeah. So for people to be able to kind of hear that story and, you know, know that the truck is still going is always a plus for yeah me, and then so. it's not just something you pick up in a field yeah. and dealt with it's i think i got her in park yep it's something that's it's a family member yeah and i think that's all something that all real car people do is the cars become part of the family yeah i mean you know the wife knows I'm that gonna show this picture here yeah so i had uh daniel olnick paint this for me yeah it's it's just a really fun truck and obviously now people know me because of it you know what i mean so i might have to use part of your footage i think the camera okay. <laughs> so yeah, since uh my camera is probably out uh, i'm <laughs> at to borrow his footage if he'll let me borrow it <laughs> uh, for what we have since gopro failed me nice um, I really appreciate it. Yeah, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was very. It's interesting. I like. I like being around something like this. It's got the story to it. That's that's stuff that I really love. Is like I said, it's not something you found in a field, and you're like, yeah. oh, that'd be cool. This is something that it means something. It's yeah. a family member. Yeah. So thank you for introducing yeah. me to your family member. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Subscribe to my channel. To keep up with stuff we got going on but definitely subscribe to his he does a lot of autocross Please. car shows car meets um, car shows car, cars yeah coffee, ev everything car mods, so he, stuff. he does a lot more of the car uh scene than we do we do a lot of like install videos and all that kind of junk that we're doing in the shop so uh, we're branching out and letting all that stuff come into our channel too so all right cool thanks, thanks. everybody <laughs> behind me you'll see a car